Hey guys, what's going on? If you're new here, my name is Brittany Nicole. I have hooded eyes and I tend to do a lot of tutorials that are catered towards the average hooded eye girl or boy. But today we are obviously not doing that kind of video because we are gonna be talking all about the Jaclyn Hill X Morphe Vault Collection. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of do my makeup and chit chat with you guys like I would if I were chit chatting with a friend. So I hope you like this style of video. If you don't, definitely catch me in the next video, which I'm sure will be a tutorial or some kind of review. But today I just wanted to kind of sit down, share my thoughts, and just do my makeup. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, go ahead and keep watching. So I'm not gonna go into details about like every single product I'm using. If I think about it, I'll mention it, but I will absolutely list everything in the bottom bar. This is the Maybelline Superstay Foundation in 220, and I'm just gonna dot that all over the face. So originally, when I purchased the Vault Collection, I was planning on doing a series where I went through each and every palette and did a full video dedicated towards it. So I even bought different backgrounds. So I bought this green one because I was gonna do like a green look. I bought a purple one. So I was like super, super dedicated to this palette and making a series for you guys. And the whole thing behind the series that I was gonna do is make it wearable for the average girl or boy who walks into Ulta because Morphe is in Ulta. And when they launch these collections, it's front and center. The first thing you see when you walk in is a giant picture of Jaclyn Hill and the collection, right? So it's affordable, it's drugstore price, and it's super hyped up on YouTube because every you know, big YouTuber for the most part has a affiliate code for Morphe. So it's one of those brands that's really, really pushed out there for the average person, especially younger crowds who are super easily influenced. I think that Morphe is one of those brands that does a good job with their marketing because they make everybody want to buy their product, right? So rewind a little bit back to Jaclyn's first palette, the original palette, I guess we'll just refer to it as that. I didn't want that palette. For some reason, it just didn't interest me at all. I had no interest in getting it. And a lot of people on my channel have asked me to do tutorials using it because they have it. And every time I went into Ulta to buy it, I didn't want it. Something about it, I was just like, I don't want this. And I have a lot of makeup and it's not like a super cheap palette. I think it's like $39 or something like that. So I was just like, nope, I'm not gonna go for that one. I don't want it, right? So fast forward now to the Vault Collection. When that was launched, again, I wasn't super interested in it. There's nothing about it that I like need. I don't think that the colors are super revolutionary. And in general, I haven't been a huge Morphe fan. I do have some Morphe brushes. Some are okay, some I like. Some are super scratchy and shed all the time. So it's like hit or miss with that. I don't have any of their face brushes. This is all their eye brushes. And I only have a couple of their face palettes. I have like one of the 35 palettes that's like pretty much browns and neutrals. And then I have the 25A and 25B palette, which I did like. The 35 palette, I can't remember, 35R or something like that. This is just the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. Just dot that lightly under my eyes. Um, the 35A and 35B palette, I had interest in and I liked it and I still do use that, but the 35R palette, I really don't grab for at all. I actually filmed a video, never posted it, of like products I don't really grab for anymore. Uh, and I did find a shade in there that I was like, oh, I actually kind of like this palette. But again, I never grab for it. So that's just one of those palettes that like doesn't interest me. And that's kind of how I felt in general about the Jaclyn Hill palettes. I just wasn't interested. Let me show you before I cover this up. The corner of my eye is absolutely raw and irritated. Both of my eyes right now are super, super, super irritated, super, super itchy, and just like raw and red. They do not feel good. I shouldn't even be putting makeup on over it, but 
I want to do a get ready with me and I'm going out tonight. So this, by the way, is from the Jaclyn Hill palette. We'll get into that in a little bit. So I just, when the vault came out, I was like, okay, I'm not that interested in this, but I know my subscribers are going to be purchasing this palette and they're going to want to know like how to make this work on hooded eyes, right? Like, like I said, it's marketed in Ulta and I think it's really heavily marketed towards the average everyday girl or boy. I think that they've built a brand that's kind of like, okay, we're affordable. Everyone can get it. It's in Ulta. It's cheap relatively cheap, depending on what you obviously think cheap is. It's much cheaper than something like an Anastasia palette or Makeup Forever or any of that. And it's so heavily pushed on YouTube. I would be shocked at this point if you were into beauty and you didn't know what Morphe was, right? So I wanted to buy this for you guys because I wanted to make this work for the everyday average woman who might not have a ton of lid space like me, have heavy hooded eyes. I got this on Monday and I started playing with it on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, and today this morning on Saturday. And I did end up recording one full tutorial and I edited it and I went to look back and I was just like, I don't like this. like. This is not exciting to me. And as I used the shades and got into each and every palette, because I practiced with each palette to make sure I could come up with a look that was wearable for the everyday person. You could watch this tutorial and be able to achieve the look because I think that's a huge problem, especially with the tutorials that I've already seen. There's a lot of tutorials for this that are super extravagant, beautiful look that takes technical skill. Obviously, you've practiced your makeup skills in the past, but that's not the case with the everyday woman, like I said, who's walking into Ulta and sees this giant stand of Morphe and these beautiful looking palettes, and they're like, oh, I want that. It's 15 bucks. I could afford that. That's like the price of a L'Oreal shadow, right? But then you get home and you look up a tutorial for it on YouTube and then you feel defeated because it's complex and they're cutting the crease and they're using every shade in the palette. And that's not to knock these looks. I think that's beautiful. I think that it takes a lot of skill, but it's not for the everyday woman. And I spent years, I mean, I started my makeup channel in 2008 and I posted videos and I, unfortunately deleted them which I kick myself like every day because I did that but from 2008 to like current when I relaunched my channel like I think two years ago maybe a year and a half ago I would try to repeat these looks online and I couldn't do it because my eyes are heavy and hooded and I have the makeup skill it's not like I can if get, get somebody in front of me I did makeup professionally for years and years I still do it get someone in front of me who has lid space and I can do a cut crease and make it look beautiful, but I don't have those eyes. And the everyday woman, like a lot of people have hooded eyes. So anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here. I started to play with these palettes, each and every one, because I wanted to practice, to have a practical look. So when I opened the palettes, I was looking at the colors to try to come up with like an everyday look, and I just wasn't feeling creative. I didn't think that the storylines, is that what they call them? like storylines or whatever of each palette made sense. There were transition colors in one palette that I wanted to have versus the palette I was looking at. So I, I kind of felt like it was making the average person feel like they needed to buy all of the palettes, if that makes sense. And then I just felt like there were too many strong colors in each palette. So I couldn't really get the like easy transition that I needed to with my hooded eyes, if that makes sense. I sat there for four days, including today, trying to come up with some kind of look that was wearable. But that one that I recorded was definitely wearable, but it just wasn't exciting in any way, and it wasn't something that I wanted to put out there. So at that point, when my eyes started to feel like super raw from trying to make a look work, and I don't rub at my eyes in any way. I'm super, super conscious of any kind of wrinkles. I try to be as delicate around the eye. I take my eye makeup off with a cream with like ponds, and I'm just super delicate in general. My eyes started to feel so itchy and super red. The corners were just completely raw, 
And I was just like, what everyday woman is gonna want this? You know what I mean? And that's when I was just like, this is not something that I want to showcase. And I certainly don't wanna put out a series of four different looks showing you something that you might like that I could make work, but then you would, again, feel defeated when you got home and tried it yourself. I just didn't think that was right. So that's when I decided I am not gonna be showcasing these palettes. I might use a shade from time to time, and that's one thing about these palettes that I think will work. You can occasionally grab a color from the palette that you need that you don't have in one of your like everyday palettes, and that way you can make it work. So that's what I'm gonna do. I would return it if I bought it from Ulta, but I bought it from Morphe, from their online site and I've heard that the return process with them is a nightmare so I'm not gonna do that but yeah I am just kind of disappointed I really should have gone with my gut on it and not purchased it because it's just not something that's super interesting to me for some reason my gut just didn't like what this had to offer and I, I wasn't going in with a negative mindset on this. I was going in with, I want to give you guys four beautiful tutorials for the everyday person and it just didn't work out unfortunately. So one thing I wanna mention, and this is one of the new Wet n Wild bronzers, uh, Queensland, right? Yeah, Queensland. And this is just a brush from Marshalls. I love these Urban Studio brushes. But anyway, one thing that I think is worth mentioning is if you have more makeup skills than like your average person who, you know, doesn't really practice makeup too much, I think you'll like these palettes. I think if you have a normal like shaped lid where you can like pop a color on the lid, which is kind of what I feel like all of Jaclyn's palette, the first one and all of these, it's, it's just more intense than like, what I prefer, and that's not to say that I don't like color, like I love the Jeffree Star Blood Sugar Collection, and that is so colorful, but it's also like wearable enough for anybody to be able to execute, and I just, I don't think that the Vault Collection is that, unfortunately. And I know there's been a ton of drama around this whole collection, which I don't want to get into because I'm not about the drama. Like, I'm not trying to bash Morphe or anything like that. Everybody has their own preferences. A lot of people don't like, like, Too Faced. A lot of people don't like Makeup Forever. A lot of people don't like a ton of different brands that, like, are liked by the masses and also hated by other people. It's all about personal preference. And I've just never been, like, super into Morphe. But that's not to say that it's not like a brand that somebody else might absolutely love. The quality, I guess, of the shadows isn't quite there for me. Um, getting into that a little bit deeper, I found all of the shimmers in this palette were chalky. Anytime I packed my brush in it and then sprayed my brush, it would fall out on my face completely, which was super discouraging. I didn't want to use any of them. And being a Jaclyn Hill palette, who is all about the shimmer, you would think that those shimmers would be absolutely stunning, and they just weren't there for me. I had fallout all over my face, and then the mattes, you could pack them on, but as soon as you went to blend, it would blend off. They would just kind of dissipate and become just a light wash of color. So like that initial go in, it looked beautiful, but then as soon as you started to blend, they just kind of disappear, which I don't really like, obviously. So I just didn't think the quality was there, but then again, I need to keep myself in check because it's a $15 palette. And that's like same price point as like a L'Oreal kind of palette or something like that, you know? I haven't used a Milani blush in a long time, so we're gonna go in with Dolce Pink from Milani. But yeah, I just, unfortunately, it didn't work out for me, but I am curious to know what you guys think. Were you excited about this palette? I know a lot of you do have her original palette because you've asked for tutorials, and I just think this is like my kind of, I mean, I can't say forever because who knows what they're going to come out with in the future but I think this is like 
the last time I'm going to try to make a Morphe eyeshadow palette work for me. I just... It's not my favorite. It's definitely not my favorite. I personally would rather spend the money on something like a Anastasia palette where I know I'm going to look at that and the shadows are going to be pigmented and they're going to blend and it's just going to be beautiful and I'm going to want to reach for it. And that was the other thing with this that I was like, this is the final straw. I'm never going to reach for these again. I do think that they did press the shadows differently that, than their other palettes because it did feel different than the, you know, 35R palette or the 25A and 25B. They did feel a little bit creamier, that's for sure, but not enough to where I'd want to grab for it again. So I will say I am happy though that I ordered those because I did get the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray and I actually do like this. I don't think it makes your makeup last in any way, but it smells lovely. And I think that it is nice to take like a powdery look away and it is the finest mist in the world. So I am happy I picked this up. This is $15, which is kind of expensive, but I actually do think this is worth it. So I am happy about that. But yeah, overall, I just don't really think that you need this palette in your life. If you're lacking a pop of color, let me just grab them so I can show you. If you're lacking like a pop of color palette, then you might want to pick them up. But let's see, like the Dark Magic one is the, the one that I actually had filmed the tutorial on. So this one has a nice transition shade, obviously right there. But once you get past that, I just wasn't feeling extremely creative with it. Like they're pretty dull, which I get it. It's a cool palette, but I mean, these shimmers are, are kind of similar. This is a little more silver. This is a little more like browny, I don't know, purpley kind of, you know what I mean? And I just, after that, like, I, I didn't think it made sense. I just, I wasn't feeling creative. And I'm pretty, a pretty creative person in general. And I just, I don't know, something about it. I was just like, this doesn't want me to get my creative juices flowing. And they are a met, like this palette is like, there is, shadow all over it you know i mean it's not like horrible my camera shut off i was just kind of saying that like there is some kick up and the palettes are getting pretty dirty pretty fast that doesn't bother me too much when you like work in makeup you kind of gotta get past any kind of like dirty situations because it's makeup and it's gonna get dirty but something to note and then uh armed and gorgeous palette the one that like everybody was kind of excited about. It's a gorgeous palette, but all of the shimmer shades, the three like gold shimmer shades, they just were like kind of chalky when I went to put them on the lid. And I don't know, I just felt like it didn't make sense with the rest of the shades. Like the middle shade on my finger, which is like the green, I mean that darker green made sense to me with the palette but the other two these two here like they were just too bright in my opinion for this kind of fall neutral palette and like with this palette every shade in here and it's a warm palette obviously but like these three kind of yellow orange matte shades are very very similar when you put them on the lid and they're just not like, in my opinion, the perfect transition, I guess. I would have rather grabbed for something like Shh in the Dark Magic collection. So that's kind of what I'm getting at when like I wanted to grab for one of my other palettes, which doesn't make sense, I guess, if you're spending money on a palette that's put together to be able to be like used as a palette for you to kind of like take on the go, if that makes sense. And then this palette, the, what are you? Bling Boss palette, like these three shimmers in here, this one, I'm trying to look in like a mirror, this one and this one all look so similar to me when, when swatched and put on the eye, like they're just so similar. I think this could have gone a different route. They could have put in another shade in here. I did come up with a nice look for this one, but again, it's just like, I just don't feel comfortable sharing things that I'm not like 100% about. And that's just kind of how I felt in general about this. So 
Yeah, that's pretty much it about that. Unfortunately, if you guys did buy this palette and were looking forward to a tutorial for me, from me rather, I'm not going to be doing that. I might use a shade from time to time. So if you have it, obviously you'll have that shade. I don't know. I'm just kind of like, ugh, right now, which is kind of how I'm feeling in general about everything on YouTube. I'm not really going to go into too much about that. I just feel like there's so much drama on YouTube right now. It's like, even I like want to know like what's going on as far as drama and I'm just not a dramatic person at all. So I don't know why I'm keeping up with any of that stuff. You know what I mean? I just, I don't get it. I don't know what's going on, but hopefully all of that will pass. Like look at my inner corner right now hopefully you guys can see like how dry that is from these palettes like my outer corner right there is super super watery and just same thing over here i just look a hot mess so i don't know if there's something in those shadows that makes my eye here i am talking about it again i don't know if there's something in those shadows that makes my eyes water but in like itch maybe there's like a cheaper ingredient than in some of my other palettes although i really really love the wet and wild palettes and those are as cheap as they get that's the other thing i wanted to mention like hands down i would grab for my wet and wild palettes over the jacqueline hill volt collection any day and that says a lot because the wet and wild palettes are like 2.99 to 4.99 and that is super cheap and I think that the pigment in those palettes for the mattes were a lot better than the mattes in this palette so take that for what it's worth I just know when it comes to makeup I want it to be effective I don't want to have to work too hard and I want it to be something that I want to grab for often if I'm going to keep it anyway I'm overall just disappointed in general because I really wanted to make that palette work and I know some of you will have bought that palette and will be excited to do looks and I don't know maybe they didn't I know there's some like controversy about not actually reformulating it mine say v2 on the back which sounds like version 2 so i don't know maybe they did maybe they didn't who knows what the deal with that is i i'd like to trust that they did that they took care of what they needed to take care of i would really like to trust that i just let me know what you guys think since i have these little like how i transition to a totally new train of thought like immediately since I have these little lip earrings that I got from Target, I'm obsessed with them and they're actually really comfortable and I have some of the most sensitive, oh my eyes, like, ah, my eyes hurt so bad. Anyway, I have some of the most sensitive ears in the world and these haven't been bugging me at all and I've had them on for already like two hours, which is awesome. So you guys know the drill. I'm going to go in with a Revlon Balm Stain in Romantic, right? Yeah. Whenever I put this lip stuff on, I like immediately feel happy. Like, I love this. This is such a good lipstick. You need this in your life if you don't have it. This is the completed look, you guys. Thanks for getting ready with me today. Again, all the details will be below. I hope this video didn't come off as like complaining or like trying to be dramatic in any way because I'm not. I just wanted to explain to you guys my thoughts on this. I definitely don't think you need this in your collection. If you have sensitive eyes like I do, beware. They may make your eyes kind of act up like mine have. I mean, at the end of the day, they're $15. They're super, super cheap. So if you did pick them up, I think you can make them work for what they are. I just wouldn't go into this thinking they were in any way revolutionary. And it just kind of... It makes me a little bit upset because apparently the first launch of her palette was like everybody loved it and was so impressed and it would have been nice to see a follow-up that was just as good and it seems like this one just missed the mark so 
yeah, that's it, you guys. Let me know if you have any questions below. Otherwise, if you haven't subscribed and want to see more videos from me, please subscribe. It means the absolute world to me, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.